be this um, soft mod tool. There's been um, a couple of websites, I think, that explain how things like this work uh, using soft mod. So I'm just gonna go uh, and show, uh, ex explain the basics of how this works uh, myself, and then show how I implemented this um, little ripple tool that generates these like ring-shaped um, ripples that can travel around the mesh. You know, so you can you can place them, for example, on the bot. You know, something like there. And then go to and tweak the radius, and I'll just you know do a ripple through it. And you can change the thickness of it by using the param. A so basically, the, this this is the distance of the param and the height of the thing. So if I set it to like 0.3 here and 0.7 here, that will make the wave a bit wider. And you can see it kind of like takes away the shape at this dimensions. So I figured, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6 are good enough values for this uh, like ripple effect. So I'm just going to show you how this works and like set this kind of stuff up manually here on a, on a plane. So I'm going to break down the... Um, um, the tool, the soft mode tool, and and show you how to use its um, fall of curve to get these kinds of effects. So let's make that, and then once we have any like surface, we go to the rigging, deform, and use the soft mode. Okay, so the the thing with the soft mode thing is um, it's like a temporary thing, so it it tends to disappear if you like click away, but you can always just like hit the Z key to undo the operation, and it'll just come back. And there is your soft mode guy, and you know you can move it around and everything. So before we continue, let's open the soft mode in the node editor. So I can show you all the important things. Uh, let's clear that. Get this guy in. Okay. So if we open this up, you know the soft mode. This is basically the object that controls the whole deformation bit, and it has. Um, a fall of center, a fall of curve, and um, well, stuff like the envelope and um, the fall of radius, which is also important. Um, so basically what this deformer does is it takes the transformation, the local transformation of its handle, so basically this matrix, um, and applies it to the region that is on uh, basically close to the fall of center. So what we can do here is just make a locator. Uh, I'm going to make it the new way. Create locator. Where is locator? Here. And we will use the locator shape. And in here, there is something called world position. So we can connect the world position to the fall of center. Now that we did that, the deformation here disappeared until I grab this locator and move it where this guy is. So basically, now this local transformation that's driven by the by the transforms of this no of this matrix here gets applied to wherever this locator is at right so we can basically slide these transforms over the over this plane by using the locator and if we move it up you can see if we get 
past a certain threshold, which is the radius, the transformations like disappear, right? So we could technically do some like fake um, fake um, collision bulge by doing this. A very simple solution for collision bulge. Um, so let's just go into this guy, open up attribute editors. And to make a Ripley thing like what I showed earlier, we need to use this fall off curve. So I've increased the radius a bit. You can basically see that's just the radius um, for this little transform to fall off on the whole surface. So if I go to like 30, you know, I can feather it off really softly. This um, the, this transformation, okay, and this curve basically. You can see it dictates the, um, the shape of this fall off. So basically, if we make a flat line, nothing will be there. But if we now do this, this is basically the circular cross section of our fall off curve um, based around that point. So we can move this thing there, and it'll be like I'm pressing a donut under a. Um, uh, a little something, something, okay, and we could basically make this such that, you know, it's a bit sharper by making this little guy, you know, smaller, and now if I adjust the radius, you can basically see it's a ring that's just becoming bigger and bigger. That's basically how I do this thing. It's just a wave that becomes um, bigger using this shape. And that's pretty much it. The other way you could do this is by manipulating these three guys and moving them along this curve together. And, and then, you know, use this as a multiplier. So you could do the same thing here. And you can you know you can do all sorts of things with it. So because this thing on, not only takes oh, sorry this thing not only uses translations uh, like this, it also uses rotations. So you can do that kind of stuff. Also pretty funny. And it uses scaling. So. Uh, we can do some like lensing effect with this guy. Um, obviously, because I'm just just scaling it now, um, the lensing effect will basically not do anything uh, except for moving these things out like that until I you know, do something like this. And then you can, you know, you can start to see a bit more what this does. And I really like this tool because you know it allows you to make smaller modifications to your mesh like that very simply. Uh, where is the guy? Uh, here. So basically, this is all it is. If we look at this guy. And we have these three perms, actually, let's just visualize it here. So you can see its envelope is going to the, the deformer envelope, its param ABC, it went into the fall of curve param points, and the radius goes into the radius, um, the fall of mode, which is this enum, goes into this. This is very important, I need to... Um, explain this very quickly. For the fall of mode, it can be volume or surface, and it's basically the same operation as, you know, um, the soft selection here, volume or surface. Um, if you're moving your guy around on a heavier mesh, then using volume will be much faster. You can see I can move this guy around in real time, and it's no problem. If I set it to surface, it's going to be really slow, right? 
because it needs to calculate its way through the surface of the mesh um, instead of just um, a simple um, radial function. So volume for, you know, you just want to like move it around quickly and, and do stuff. And then when you have it at the place where you want, you can set it to surface to get a more accurate representation of the thing spreading around a non-planar surface. Um, so that was that. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, let me just view chat and see if there's any questions to this. Jesus, okay. Um, Cool. I think the, I think I explained it well enough that there's no questions. Uh, no. So I'll just stop the recording and check it out and upload it in a minute. Thanks guys for coming and see you next time.